feet, one inch, sophomore from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, Sam Bowie. Number 20, a guard, 6'4", freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Jim Master. And number 10, a guard, 6'3", sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky, Dirk Minifield. And Kentucky basketball head coach, Joe B. Hall. And now, introducing the Bulldogs of Georgia. Number 21, a forward, 6'7", sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, Dominique Wilkins. Number 25, forward, 6'6", freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, James Banks. Number 35, a center, 6'7", sophomore from Macon, Georgia, Terry Fair. Number three, a guard, 6'2", junior from Brooklyn, New York, Eric Marbury. And number 10, a guard, 6'5", freshman from New York, New York, Vern Fleming. And Georgia basketball head coach, Hugh Durham. So Hugh Durham and his Georgia Bulldogs set to go against a powerhouse from the Southeastern Conference, Kentucky. And we'll be back with the opening tip-off in just a moment. Georgia takes the floor. The Bulldogs in white on their home floor. And the Wildcats of Kentucky coming in with a record overall of 14-3. And, and they're 7-2 in the Southeastern Conference. Two games behind LSU, which has a perfect conference record of 9-0. and The matchups. Big height advantage for Kentucky, particularly when they bring Melvin Turpin in off the bench. He's another seven-footer. The man going up at center, Sam Bowie, 7-1. Dirk Benefield has the ball for the Wildcats of Kentucky as they come down the floor. And a man defense right off the bat. When Kentucky changed the lineup down and put Master in the game, I believe that might have changed a little thinking on the part of Georgia. Right. Jim Master, a freshman from Fort Wayne, starting for Kentucky. The stuff doesn't go, and the Bulldogs throw for the ball, and they get it up quickly. Vern Fleming, a great freshman from New York City, throws the ball away. I noticed this year they're not calling and grabbing the rim as much as they called the last two years. Well, the rim is still vibrate now, no question about it, but how about the hustle by Sam Bowie? He missed the dunk, went over the bench to make that tremendous block on the pass up court. Super hustle by the big guy. Inbounds ball goes to the freshman center, Jay Banks. Coming outside, this is Eric Marbury, the only junior starting for anyone in this game. Kentucky with four sophomores and a freshman. And they're try starting off with a triangle and two. You've got Kurt and Horde and Bowie playing his own. Dominique Wilkins, the sensational sophomore from Washington, North Carolina, hits the first shot of the game, and Georgia takes the lead. Fleming going to have his hands full, trying to stay with, right there is the foul, trying to stay with Dirk Minifield. Minifield much too quick for Fleming. We apologize for the difficulty we're experiencing with the video portion of our telecast. They're making the attempt now to correct that and hopefully will very soon as Kentucky inbounds the ball with freshman Jim Master and Dirk Minifield, a sophomore in the backcourt. Charles Hurt puts it up off the backboard, hits the first shot of the game for Kentucky. Game is tied at two. Georgia really pushes the ball up the court in a hurry, don't they, Allie? Try to take advantage of that quickness they have in the front line. Rebound down to Derek Horde. Up court to the freshman, Jim Master. Here's Jim Master, the freshman, who was the top high school player in the state of Indiana last year at Fort Wayne. Down low, they go to Sam Bowie, puts it up, and Bowie hits a field goal that puts Kentucky in the lead for the first time, 4-2. to two. If they stay in this man-to-man, -man, Sam Bowie will score 40 points today. Well, what's so <laughs> tough is trying to front a big guy like Bowie. We'll see it right here. Cherry Fair trying to play him on the side or front him a little bit. Obviously, the lob target is there. Marbury didn't get back in time to pinch from the backcourt. You're right, Al. It's almost an impossibility to handle him out front with a 6'7 man. You'll see quite a few alley-oops, I think, put on today by Kentucky. Now Kentucky straight man-to-man -man down the other end of the floor. This is Vern Fleming, the 6'5 freshman guard. Down low they go. Dominique Wilkins oh. down low and putting the ball up. It's Terry Fair. 
Terry Fair hits it for the Bulldogs. It's a 5-4 game, Kentucky. Again, the Globe trying to pass that time. I'd hate to think how great a pair of forwards they'd be if they had a big man in the middle between them because they are very, very talented. There's the lob. Charles Hurt can't follow it up. And finally, Georgia comes down with all. Here comes Eric Marbury. Back in the whip down the middle on the break. Looks men off to either flank. Goes to Jay Banks, who's a 6-7 center. Really no true center on the Georgia team. And they're hoping Fleming will emerge as a true point guard. They need the leadership in the backcourt, and they're calling on a freshman to give it to him. Turning around is Dominique Wilkins. He goes to the floor, and there's a foul called on Kentucky's Charles Hurt. Dominic, we will not win ball games taking shots like that. That's for sure. I think he's a little bit frustrated, realizing the ball's got to go up. He received the ball in such a high position there that a turnaround jumper from 18 feet is not, not a winning shot. Georgia not big, but they call them the dogs of dunk. They can get up in the air, these six sevens they have up front. Wilkins, a 23-point-a-game score, hits the free throw to tie the game at 5-all. And he is a scorer. You know, it's the difference between a scorer and a shooter. A scorer, he can score from outside, inside, off transition. He can post you up. Charles Hurt, a powerful forward, takes the rebound down. Here comes Kentucky quickly. Lob goes down. Yeah, that should have been a tech. Yeah, it was. He not only lost the basket, but it's going to be a technical foul. Looks like he tried to smother that one in the basket. I think it's a great play to the big guys to just throw that ball up to the basket. Here, we'll see it right here. There it is. Sam grabbed it. He tried to release, but much too late. Yeah, the basket caught him in the Adam's apple, I think. <laughs> He's a lot bigger guy than he was a year ago. He's put on a lot of weight. In and the right places. Kentucky, very big on weight training for their athletes. People yes. don't realize that when you're that high up in the air, particularly when you're moving forward, you're trying to really protect yourself from a bad fall, and you have a tendency to grab that ring just to get your balance. Particularly Bowie, Billy, because a week ago against Vanderbilt, he went down, they thought he fractured a hip. Fortunately, he was all right, but he went out of the game. It looked like he was seriously injured, so he's probably very conscious of that when he went to the rim. It's now a 6-5 game. George is in the lead with 17-19 to play in the first half. Little wet spot on the floor caused Fair to slip. Now they've gone to the zone. Hugh Durham has seen enough of the lob pass. He's saying, we better get over here. Georgia gets the turnover. Here's Vern Fleming coming down court, and freshman Jim Master takes the ball back toward Kentucky. Georgia bench looking for a travel call. Charles Hurt goes baseline, and Kentucky takes a 7-6 to six lead. Beautiful pass by Hort that time. Sat right down with the bounce. If Georgia's going to stay in this game, it's the right style from this transition game. It'll help Georgia. They're individual stars out of high school, but they got remembered like a five-point star now. They're just a point on the star. Dominic Wilkins turns on Charles Hurt. Rebound comes out to Hurt. He starts up court. There's going to be a foul call going against the Bulldogs. You can look at Dominic Wilkins' stats. He's only been to the foul line 77 times. So that ought to show you that he's not going to take the ball to the hoop as much as he's going to pull up and take the jumper. To be quite honest, I think if he wheeled as tight as he's being played by Hurt, if he wheeled and went to the basket, he might be better off. Dirk Menefield has emerged as the leader in the backcourt for Kentucky. He's a sophomore, number 10. There's Derek Cord, another sophomore, out to the freshman master, a sharpshooter from Fort Wayne, great outside shooter at 6-4. Back to man-to-man, -man, Georgia. In a field shot, no good, and Dominic Wilkins skies for the rebound for Georgia. Vern Fleming with the ball was the most recruited player in New York City last year, coming out of Mater Christi High School, electing to come to Georgia, starting for the Bulldogs. Beautiful. Down low. Jay Banks goes up, draws the foul. Beautiful pump fake by Banks. He was one of the premier players in the country also last year. A Georgia player, and you know, with the state of Georgia and a lot of the southeastern states are now starting to put out as many high-quality players in high school of any place in the country. As a matter of fact, I was down in Alabama a couple of weeks ago, and other than California, many feel that this year Alabama has the best high school players in the country. Well, you know what's happened, Billy? For years, the Southern University did not take the black athlete. It's only been about the last six or seven years they started to take it. He was over the line, but they didn't call it. No, Stepped over the not. line. They did not. The free throw goes, and the game is tied at seven with 15.54 left to play in the...
Turn the ball over. Smart move after the timeout. You see most of the coaches in the country changing the defense at timeouts. Brian Fleming very seldom turns the ball over. Tremendous control of the ball. Oh, nice by Fair. Very Fair going to the basket. Couldn't get the shot to go, but he did draw the shooting foul on Sam Bowie. What I like so much about that, Don, is the fact that most guys offensively who play against big people like Bowie and Sampson, they try to keep the ball away from him. Watch Fair. He takes it right to him. Puts it right up through his face, which is uh, the proper thing to do against big fellas. Joe B. Hall's up talking to an official here. And Terry has some nice height on that foul shot. What's the height of it as he has let the ball go at its apex? Nice and high. And it drives in there. And here's the full court pressure now by Georgia. Mixing it up pretty well. Jim Master, a freshman guard, passed against another freshman, Vern Fleming, both consensus high school All-Americans a season ago. You notice Durham took Fleming off the much quicker minute field. Walker. Kentucky turns it over again and comes back inbound to the Bulldogs of Georgia. They're leading the game are the Bulldogs 9-7. Hugh Durham down his third year after 13 seasons at Florida State. The size of the hands on his burn Fleming he controls that ball. He doesn't have all the quickness in the world, but he got the height for a guard. He's 6'5". Wilkins, who can shoot over most defenses, does it again, and George opens up its biggest advantage, four points. He has the great vertical leap, but still the same release on the jump shot, much like a, a David Thompson or a Daryl Griffin that could go ahead and put it up. Eric Marbury steals the ball. Takes Ooh. it. Marbury lays it on down. I thought he should have dropped it off to the left that time. He had Jay Banks on the left side going down. Charging foul, but it came after the basket. So he does get credit for the field goal, and Georgia extends its lead to 6, 13-7. Talking about leapers. Hugh Durham said he'd be a great 6-foot-2-inch guard. Eric Marbury, a 6'2 guard from Abraham Lincoln High School in Brooklyn. Down low, the ball goes to Hurt, throws it back out to Master, and it's tipped over to Derek Hoard. Kentucky's Derek Hoard takes it. Pulling up. No bad. That ball was on the rim and in the cylinder when Bowie touched it. Everything seemed to be going against the big guy right now. The thing that Kentucky's doing right now, they're not balancing their scoring attack. They're looking to go inside every time. They got to let Masters or uh, Minifield shoot from the outside to loosen up underneath. They got three guys around uh, the big man, Sam. Dominique Wilkins, let's fly again, and Sam Bowie sweeps down the defensive board for Kentucky, and here comes Dirk Minifield. Masters, let's see you take one from the outside, kids. I think he was put in there because Joe Hall expected Georgia to play more zone today. Masters in a foot race with Fleming, and Jim Masters gets the ball, and... Oh, oh backcourt. The ball was thrown back there, and he went for it. He'd have been smart to just go ahead and kick that baby out of bounds. Well, if they score on this, uh, Joe Beast will have to regroup. Make some substitutions. Yeah, subs will be the answer for it. Kentucky guilty of an inordinate number of turnovers for a Kentucky team this early in the game. Georgia leading the game 13-7, 13-44 to play in the first half. Marbury trying to go low on Dirk Minifield and pulls up and jumps on him. Pre predetermined he was going to get that shot off the minute he touched the ball. Oh. Here's the sharpshooter, the freshman. Yep, about time. they got to start hitting from the outside. Masters is the clone of Macy. And he, I watched him in practice yesterday. He could fill it up. Dangerous pass that time, but uh, a great catch by Wilkins. We apologize for the technical difficulties that we're having with the video portion of our telecast. Please bear with us as the telephone company is attempting to correct this problem. The Georgia Bulldogs doing well early in this game against highly ranked Kentucky, the number five team in the country. Georgia in the lead, 13-9, looking to go up, up by Morris. Terry Fair throws the jumper up. Burn Fleming, a 6-5 guard, gets it inside. I think we're going to see some wholesale substitutions by Joe Hall and look for Freddie Cowan, a guy that's always played well against Georgia to get in there soon. On the fly. Deuce. Oh, he told Deuce. They, they had to do this. They were just going inside too much. I believe in going inside, but you you got to keep that uh, them honest at the outside. Now they won't be able to put three men around Sam Bowie. He does have a sweet shot, doesn't he, Master? Oh, he's... Um, 
He can do it. <laughs> he was, um, I believe, Mr. Indiana last year. Yeah, Mr. Basketball, top player in the state, and headed to Lexington to Kentucky. Going baseline down, laying the ball up. It's Terry Fair, but there's a whistle. Foul on Bowie outside. Of course, if they can get Bowie to have to go out and play fair 15 feet from the basket, really plays into George's hand. Joe Hall very upset at this point. That's number two on Bowie. Joe B now in its ninth year. Say the B stands for basketball hall. Said he's more relaxed, Dale, than you've seen him in recent years. Yes, he, uh, he knocked off some weight, too, and um, we had dinner with him last night, a fish fry, enjoyed it. They picked up the check for change. <laughs> <laughs> Fowler in the game now at the other guard spot. Nice! Running to the basket, can't get it to go out, let pass goes to Dirk Minifield, and he takes it all the way and lays the ball up. Partially rejected by Fair, they run the other way, and Master comes up with the ball for Kentucky. Everybody ran away from the ball. Fair did a great job. Boy, he can, he's like a Jerry West, isn't he? Yeah. The, um, how about a Kyle Mason? That's who he, uh, of course, was recruited to fill his shoes, and I think uh, in time he's going to be that caliber of player for Kentucky. Well, I say he's quicker already, Billy, and has the great shot. Wilkins on a turnaround in the opposite direction. The rhythm is made for Georgia, the rhythm they're playing right now. It's a little bit too fast. And Georgia wants a transition game. Master with three field goals, thinking offense. Now he's brought Kentucky right back into it at 17-13 Georgia. Now they got to play Sam man-to-man, -man. so get into Sam now. See how Wilkins there everybody it is. else trying to help out. Nice job. Look at those guys get up, though, to reject it back. And here comes the flying shot by Dominique Marcus. No good. The follow-up by Fleming goes down. Timeout, Joe. You need a timeout right now. I'm really surprised now that he hasn't either gone with a timeout or the substitution. Nice switch. But Minifield comes up with the ball for Kentucky. Boy, this master, this kid's got it. Down low, powerful Charles Hurt feeds Sam Bowie, and the call goes against Georgia. Banks on the double team trying to help out. A great job the last time down the floor, and the Georgia players helping out inside on Terry Fair. Of course, later today, we'll be picking a player to receive the most valuable player of the game scholarship award. Right now, we have 10.49 left to play in the first half of the Georgia Coliseum, and the Bulldogs are leading favorite Kentucky, 19. All of them are great leapers and quick off the floor. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Now you have Kentucky with their all freshman backcourt. Beal into the game. Joe Hall really going with a young club out there now. Nicky Beal, a freshman from Covington, Kentucky. Bounces into the corner to another freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Jim Masters. And Georgia playing the zone right now. Beal put in the game to get things moving from a quickness factor. Georgia in a 2-3 zone. Bowie comes out high. Sam Bowie, they go down low to Charles Hurt. Trying to feed Bowie in. Georgia with its quickness. Here comes Dominique Wilkins. Over everybody. Ten points for Wilkins and a 21-13 lead for Georgia. Boy, he's like a big bird when he goes up there. That's the second time Georgia came out of the timeout going into the zone. Now they're back to the man to man. Just one time down the court and they went to the zone. Dominique Wilkins from Washington, North Carolina, where he led his high school team to 55 straight wins and two state titles. How did Dean Smith ever let him get out of there, Billy? Well, it wasn't Dean Smith. It was at that time Norm Sloan who was coaching at North Carolina State that really had the shot at Dominic, and I think he was absolutely amazed that Dominic did not go to the state. I understand the reason was that everybody talked about him being the next David Thompson. He wanted to be the first Dominic Wilkins. He ain't bad. Here's Sam Bowie, who's built himself up with weights, built his confidence up by his success playing for the Olympic team on their tour last summer. Came to Kentucky, Sam Bowie, seven feet one inches tall out of Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Weighed only 199 pounds. Now as a sophomore, he's up to 235. Yeah, he added on 20 pounds. He has a head cold. 
but he said it doesn't bother him that much. I picked him on my first team All-American in the National Magazine earlier in the year. We've seen great centers now consecutive weeks. Ralph Sampson was nothing short of fabulous for Virginia. Oh, great play. Gary Fair going to the basket. Can't get the goal. Lead pass goes to Charles Scherzer. Here comes Kentucky on the run. Now they settle it down and go to the freshman guard, Dickie Beal. Alternating their defense. Yep. Gone. They're back into man-to-man -man now. Yep. Double low post. Beal down low. Wilmore Fowler's against him in the game for Georgia. Or can't get it to go. Fight for the loose ball. Ruin a rule that Charles Hurt is the last to touch, and that brings Joe B off the bench again. I think, it, I think it changed your mind there. I think it's on Fowler hitting it out of bounds. They're going to give it back to Kentucky. Joe was, now can return to the bench, Daddy. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he took the baton march. <laughs> Charles Hurt, baseline again for a second time in the game. You recall earlier, he went right to left. Both times with field goals at the 21-17 game, Georgia. 8.55 to play, first half. Kentucky in blue, the number five team in America. Young team but a contender for the national championship. Nice pass. Wilmore Fowler can't get the shot. Terry Fair goes back up. Beautifully done by Fair. Offensive rebound and right back up, Al. That was Jay Banks. He gave a head and shoulder fake that time. He got the inside position. Boy, well, give Wilkins some credit doing a nice dip. A dump, rather. There's Fowler going in. Bowie does a good job. You're right, it was Banks. Beautiful fake on up. Has a chance now for a three-point play. Georgia playing very, very well at this point. They really are with 8.44 to go in the first half. James Banks from Smith High School in Atlanta, as you were pointing out, Billy, he was a high school All-American. At 6-7, a true forward. Yeah, he can play on any team in the country. Well, they say he handles the ball well enough to play guard. Full court pressure now, man-to-man -man by Georgia. Just mixes things up very well, keeping Kentucky off balance. Chuck Verderber in the game now. Had that appendectomy, but uh, he'll give you everything that he's got for the number of minutes he can afford to play. He missed nine games after his surgery. Again, Georgia comes up with the ball. Perry Fair gets it. Bernd Fleming looks over to the bench. Gets the play from Coach Durham, and now the Georgia Bulldogs leading by seven, 24-17. Freddie Cowan's going to come in the game. Inexperienced front line really caused Kentucky problems. Perry Fair hits it off glass. And Georgia has its biggest lead of the ball game, nine points. It looks like they're trying to punch the ball too soon into Sam each time down. So much of the feeding, Al, has come from the forwards. And they're shutting off the lane, collapsing nicely, Georgia. And they're coming up with the rebounds. Here comes Wilmore Fowler. 6-2 backcourt player leads to Banks. Jay Banks gets it back to Fowler, and Vern Fleming will set it up over again. He goes and drives on Master. What a play by Vern Fleming. As I said earlier, he has great control of the ball. What a love miss in Georgia. The underdog Bulldogs. Ducky with Dirk Menefield back in the game with Jim Master. Brings the ball up court, down low to Verderber. And here is Fred Cowan, the only senior who's played in the game so far, missing the inside shot for Kentucky, and Georgia's quick to run again. Down low, they're going and off the hands of Dominique Wilkins, who's shaken up. His hand was banged up. He's had a knee problem, did last year, but he's been fine this season. To dry up that part of the court now, because he's sweating so much, but he's slippery there. Terry Fair made a sensational rebound on the other end of the floor. You see Freddie Cowan put the ball up quickly. Now with Verderber and Cowan in the game, see if those forwards can't do a better job being Bowie. Verderber gets it inside, heads to the basket, and draws a shooting foul. Well, he played eight minutes in the last game, but he sat out for nine straight games after the Notre Dame game with the operation uh, on the appendix. He's a hard-nosed type of player. He's a free dental student at the university he's in his junior year. From Lincoln, Illinois, Chuck Verderber. Ellis Crowd, you remember this Coliseum very well, bringing some of your great Marquette teams here in the NCAA. Very enthusiastic group. Yeah, they're tough here, especially behind the baskets. They got these pom-poms. If you're taking a foul shot, you're looking into that window, and you can see the pom-poms moving. Without 100% concentration, you're going to miss. There's 
that reverse pivot by Dominic Wilkins again. That is a tough shot to defend right there. Well, he's putting on the show. 12 points now for Wilkins. You see him turn. Really a great feed by Byrne Fleming. Now watch him turn the reverse way. Really throws the defender off balance. This has got to be the third or fourth time George has gone to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Kentucky has got to get back in this thing before it starts getting away because you pointed out well, Al, in the beginning of this game, the tempo was all Georgia. And that has continued with 6.40 left to play in the first half. Georgia 31, Kentucky 18. Master feeds off Bowie, who's been quiet for a while, can't get the shot. Comes back in bounds to the Wildcats. I think Kentucky has the break because I feel that Georgia does not have a good delay game. I honestly can't say why I'm I'm saying that to you out there, but I but the type of plays they have, they all seem to be one-on-one. -on -one. Now they're back in a two-three zone. Mike Morris from, from Wake Forest, North Carolina, is now in the ball game for Georgia. Nice pass. Beautiful. Freddie Cowan got tripped that time on a backdoor move. Beautiful high feed from Sam Bowie. who is an excellent passer for a big man. The last time I watched Fred Cowan play was against Duke in the NCAA, and he got 26 points. Brought him all the way back from a big deficit. At 22 against Georgia in the first game. Yeah, at the end of the game, that was when Kyle Macy took the last shot, and it just didn't go in. And Duke moved on in the NCAA. Rebound down to Berserber, who just worked harder to get it. Guess muscled his way in there, hard-nosed basketball. He gets 110% every time he plays. He anxious to see how many minutes he can play without substitution. He's come back quickly from that appendectomy. You know how tough that's got to be when you're sitting down. Right now, Georgia with the ball and a 10-point lead, 31-21. Terry Fair, 6-7 forward outside. A lot of motion in the Georgia offense down low, and they go back to their point guard, Vern Fleming. Got that ball on the string, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Dominique Wilkins fires his shot, gets the offensive board right back up. Fast forward. He'll shoot again for a three-point play. Billy, that must be the fourth or the fifth three-point play they picked up. Right. That was a smart move on Wilkins' part to go ahead and take that ball, and he used the rim as a defense as a uh, obstacle against a defensive player. See him here grabbing a rebound. Now watch him take the ball on the underside of the basket, which shielded off Bowie. He couldn't go over there for the block. Great play. One of his better part of his games is offensive rebounding. He's a lot like Special K. Clark Kellogg out of, out of um, Ohio State. Brett Birup is now in the game for Kentucky. Another of their fabulous freshmen. They are said to have had the greatest recruiting year of any team in the country. School All Americans in the freshman class. 33 21 now. George is in the lead with Dominique Wilkins leading the way for the Bulldogs with 15 first half points. He's going to sit down now. You notice they're playing that 2 3 zone more and more now, trying to make sure that Bowie doesn't get on track. Red Town at the free throw line. Lamar Hurd in the ball game for Wilkins. Hugh Durham wanting to give his guys a rest. He knows Kentucky has a deep bench, and I'm sure he's wanting to keep this solid fresh for the second half. Fred Cowan, whose play has been disappointing, according to the coaching staff this season. He was great for Kentucky last year. Looking for a big game from him. Stabilizer in the front court with these younger players. It's a 10-point lead now for Georgia. And an open offense, spreading things out, making Bowie go out on fair. Probably going to try to use a little clock here while they have Wilkins on the bench. Lamar Hurd with the ball goes back to Vern Fleming. Hurd, a transfer from Kansas, goes right back to Fleming again, open up the middle for him. Brett Vera is on Hurd. Al, the philosophy here, of course, to take a little time off the clock and spread Kentucky out, but does it take away your momentum? I think it does. I, I don't think, uh, let's say they're just waiting to get Dominic Wilson back in, but I just don't feel they have the type of material to delay. Um, I think they'll turn the ball over. Fleming won't, but I think one of the other four guys will. I think when you're playing this delay, you've got to look to score. You know, as long as it's a, still an offensive weapon, you have less tendency to turn it over. Nice. It's really getting rough down low. This time the ball goes back over to the Wildcats, and they 
can cut the Georgia lead to eight if they succeed at this end. Let's let's count when they went into that delay, Billy. It was 4:30 with 10 points spread, and they had the ball. All right. All right. See what happens by halftime. Georgetown and Nevada Las Vegas are tied up, 26-26 in the first half. Wilmore Fowler comes up with a loose ball. Turnover again, and Georgia beneficiary, 3.55 to go first half. I would say the Kentucky forwards on the pass into the post area turned the ball over five or six times. They're really causing themselves some problems there. Fleming has taken Master down low. They're back to their regular offense. I think Hugh Durham saw enough of the lane. Turnover, Kentucky gets the ball. Hugh Durham in his third year now, Georgia. Georgia with its first winning season eight years. Last season under Durham. The college champions of football, the Georgia Bulldogs, and the Georgia basketball team. Playing a big game today against Big Kentucky. A fifth-ranked team in the country, the Wildcats, right now with the ball, but down by 10. Red Cowan does not get the roll, nor does Bowie get the tap, and the rebound is inside court. Hurd gets the ball, goes to Fleming. Every time he looks over to his bench to get the call from his coach. They're going to run a set play. Well, Kentucky is snake bit with that ball up around the rim. It just won't go in the hole. A lot of guys that play over the rim in this game. Well, I think you'll see Turpin come in soon, just before halftime. He might, he might give Sam a blow. Sam has two fouls. He shouldn't pick up his third uh, before half. And he's really playing aggressively on Terry Fair. Masters having his hand full with Fleming. That almost was a chance for another three-point play. There they are, both in the red and the blue. George is giving away a lot of height, but they really go to the basket, don't they? Well, they, they get off the ground real quick. They're leapers where Kentucky's more power. They'll show more of their strength in the second half. Here we have both coaches at half court. Joe Hall trying to get a piece of one referee's ear. So right away, Hugh Durham comes down and said, no, I'll have none of that. I'll be part of the conversation myself. Now they're laughing at each other. Well, that's what, they, that's what most coaches do. If one coach is speaking to the official, the other coach gets in the area. Got to maintain your turf. Yeah. <laughs> Full court pressure by Georgia. They're really mixing things up beautifully. 11-point lead for Georgia. Jim Master, the freshman guard, goes over to another freshman, Brett Birup, from Centerport, Long Island. Both high school All-Americans, consensus All-Americans. Birup at 6'9", 230, goes to Sam Bowie. He shot That's rebound, shot. taken down by Terry Fair of Georgia. Here come the Bulldogs on the run. As Vern Fleming searches out someone underneath, takes it down low himself against Master in a Great reset. block by oh, Bowie. Oh, what oh. a play. Holy mack. Up court to Cowan. Bowie's up. Tap. Boy, Bowie took a bad shot at the other end of the floor. He's getting a little frustrated that he hadn't been able to get the ball. But this is a sensational defensive play and a great effort to go get the loose ball. And he really gets up and down the floor, Bowie. He can he run. He really does. Two minutes to go now. First half. Georgia 34, Kentucky 25. Ready, Cowan reaching in. It's his second. Here comes Turpin in the game. Yeah, I figured he'd get him in at the end here. Give Sam a blow. Right. That's good. That's a good move. You don't want to go in with three fouls. Boy, the effort by Bowie on that last exchange was really great. He knew he took a bad shot at the other end of the floor, and he just hustled and overcame the mistake with two sensational plays. If they have a center, this Mike Morris is shooting now. He's six foot seven. He's built like a center. And um, he neutralizes the, uh, the taller men on Kentucky. And I mentioned he was from Wake Forest, North Carolina. That's where, the, where my alma mater used to be located now. They moved the entire campus across the Winston Cell. Kentucky down by 13 earlier, looking to get back close before halftime comes as Dirk nice. Minifield takes it down the lane and lays the ball in, and the Wildcats now trail Georgia by seven. Obviously, move. nobody there to block that shot because so by everybody aware of Turpin's presence. Oh, tough play. Tough. Georgia doing very well and maintain possession there. Fleming coming up with the ball. Here is Eric Marbury and Wilmore Fowler with the ball.
Georgia sitting on the ball as we wind down to 105 and counting in the first half. Well, with the two, with the double team pressure by the Kentucky guards, that was very well executed. Nobody from the Georgia front court was moving back to help out. Turpin will not go out on fast. Gary Fair needs to keep that dribble alive. Dominique Wilkins still on the bench. Two fouls and 15 points in the first half. There's Fowler being a little bit too quick that time for Master. Talked about keeping the dribble alive. When Fair has the ball, he put the ball down, one dribble, picked it back up. From that point, he can go nowhere. Nice call. I really believe in, the, in their slowdown that they started at four minutes and 30 seconds. They had a 10-point lead. It's down to seven. Uh, I think they moved into it too soon, Bill. Well, I thought they were trying to protect Dominic Wilkins uh, and get him back in the game after a little rest, but he hasn't been back yet. Well, he won't get back now, I doubt, very seriously. Dirk Menefield going to the free throw line for Kentucky. 88% free throw shooter, and he brings the Wildcats back to within six. Yeah, he put them right back in the ball game here. The biggest spread, I think, was 13. Biggest was 13, right. You know, Wilkins has played over 600 minutes, which means he doesn't come out often, but he's been sitting out for almost six minutes. So I guess Hugh Durham wants to go for the stretch drive in the second half because he is down on the bench. Vern Fleming comes outside, ball tipped away by Verderber, but Lamar Hurd picks it up. A transfer from Kansas. Hurd pulls up, jump passing down low. And a ball is slam dunk by Terry Fair. And Georgia gets a field goal. They've been quiet for a while. Another three-point play opportunity. Beautiful pass. Verderber did a wise thing. Tried to come over and help out, but he got a little bit too late. Kid's a fine athlete right here, Terry Fair. Make a silent, ball. solid type player. 28 seconds to go now in the first half. Georgia up its lead to nine. It's hitting the two free zones. Dirk Menefield. Free throws the last time down the floor. Field goal this time, and he brings Kentucky back to within seven. They gotta go for one right here. Yeah, look for the shot with six seconds left to go. In a field with five points. Uh -uh. Yes. Gonna get caught, it's on long. Got it away at the horn, but it doesn't go. No, you're supposed to allow time for a rebound after the shot. But Georgia comes up with a big first half of basketball against fifth-ranked Kentucky. And the Georgia Bulldogs led by Dapo. See, Wilkins not even guarding hurt down when he gets that outside 12 feet so he can ha haul back in there on Bowie. Here's Chuck Verderber looping it down to Sam Bowie off the side of the backboard. Loose ball. Great job by Terry Fair. Kentucky is not going to be able to feed from the forward spot because the forward is not being played defensively because he won't take the jumper. Absolutely right, Billy. The forward has to shoot to keep the defense honest. Wilkins pulls up. Got fouled and almost made the shot. No call, though, and now with the ball coming very quickly is Dirk Minifield. It's Jim Master who hit those three outside jump shots for Kentucky in the first half. Top scores for Kentucky. Hurt had six. Cowan had five. Bowie had five. Master had six. Menefield had five. Hurt, you've got to go up to your defensive man or shoot one or the other. That's right. They're not playing him. which puts almost a triple team around Bowie inside. Kentucky with only 30 first half points. They average 73 a game. Oh, such a nice hit. Such a release. He's an unbelievable shooter. He'll have days when he gets big numbers. What's good about him, he doesn't have to put the ball on the floor to get off the jump shot. That, that was a great jump shot from the outside. He's put in the air four times now and got them all, I think. They're trying to take Bowie outside a little bit. Jim Master with some sharp outside shooting. Hasn't shot that often, but he's made it count now. Georgia's up by just five points. Big basket right here. I think they'll try to get it down low to Dominic Wilkins. Jay Banks feeds it off. They go to Wilkins out high. Wilkins 
Well, that's, that might be low for him. <laughs> well, you, it shows you what a great shooter he is if you just be patient enough. He forced up the last. Burn Fleming matched against Minifield. Here's Master coming out from down low, looking to shoot it up. Marbury, all goes back to Minifield of Kentucky. There's that double team on Bowie, almost a triple team now. Master lost the handle going up. and uh, He was looking to pass the ball to Sam, had indecision. Yep, that's a lot pass. There's Fleming again on the drive. Kept his head up nice all the way through. New York, New York. Vern Fleming from New York, New York. Nine points now in Georgia with a nine-point lead. Fleming's taking advantage of Master defensively. Chuck had to take that 15-footer last time down. He's having indecision. Nice play. Sam Bowie has been quiet for a while, now has seven points for Kentucky, and the Wildcats are down by seven. Right back the other way. Doesn't go for Georgia. Hurt comes up with the ball. Quickly up court to Minifield. Three on two. Bowie's down low. Loot pass to Bowie. And oh, it on sensational. Down. Excellent pass. That was a yeah, Dirk is used to working with him more than Masters is. In time, Masters will be able to lay him up there like that, too. And they just threw it right up around the rim. Bowie hustling again down the court. Nice job. Beautifully timed throw in the slam dunk by Sam Bowie, and now Kentucky's down by five. It's freshman Vern Fleming of Georgia. Trying to work against his counterpart, freshman Jim Master of Kentucky. That's that. Nice. Hung in the Master. air. Kentucky's on starting one. to run now. Oh, bad, bad play by Dirk that time. He should have kicked the ball right back over. College basketball is brought to you by Chevrolet and your Chevrolet dealers from coast to coast. By Lowenbrow, when you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. By General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. And by RCA's Color Track. Getting the color right is what Color Track is all about. 16.05 left to play in the game. George is still leading. And now by seven. There's your cryer, Al. Thanks, yep. putting it up there. Big hit by Jay. George is playing a great game. They're well prepared. Hugh Durham is pushing them as hard as they can. A lot of their losses in the SEC were on the road this year. That's right. This game today will be the last time to have to play Kentucky, of course, and they've lost on the road to LSU, Tennessee, Vanderbilt. Tough places to play, and Kentucky. Wilkins, look at this man play basketball. Fingertip no. roll. Surprisingly, there's indecision on Kentucky when Georgia holds the ball out and all of a sudden starts to penetrate. People are kind of looking around a little bit, and here's Verderber coming back in. I mean, Barrow. So he and he and Cowan are going to be called upon to play some defense down that end of the floor. And another three-point play, possibly. I think a lot of that's caused by the indecision we just mentioned. Here's Mr. Excitement. Mr. Excitement's gone for 20 in this game. He has been the difference as Georgia leads 46-38. There's Sam Bowie a little earlier. But Sam Bowie has scored but nine points so far, and Dominic Wilkins has hit for 19. Get forward in here. Yeah, yeah Fred, Fred needed that basket. He needs some confidence. Short. Minifield loses one now with a behind-the-back dribble on the left flank as Derek Hord. Minifield pulls up, can't get it to work. Derek Minifield dribbles too much on the break. He yo-yos it too much. Here's there up the... Oh, Mr. J. J. Banks. Boy, that was some kind of rebound. Kentucky really needed that jumper to fall for Barrett. They haven't been getting anything from the outside from the forward position. Georgia doesn't have any real tall play, but they've got fabulous athletes out there. Lee pass down to Fred Cowan. Beautifully done by Cowan. Control of the ball. The layup's good. He draws the foul. Give, give credit to Bowie. He released that. Yep. yep. Cowan on a defensive play. Blocked it. Took off right away. Now, Banks made the little hesitation. That's a freshman mistake. One, the bad pass. Two, he hesitated to let Cowan to break long. And then three, he committed the three-point violation. Yeah, the only mortal sin in basketball, in my opinion, is a three-point play. Well, ended up two, maybe four. Four. four, four. <laughs> Got to be a four-point play. Uh, 
Got to regroup, Georgia. Settle down. Got a four-point lead. The Wildcats are coming at you. The big blue. Let's come back to within four. Georgia with the ball. Led by as many as 13 in the first half. Led by seven at halftime. Another freshman mistake. What we have right here is Fleming. He's up against Horde right now. Horde, a much better defensive player, obviously, than Master. And Fleming's not going to get by with that drive against a guy like Derek Horde. Sam Bowie intimidated him, too. He psyched him out that time. Bowie looking for the lob. He's still grabbing that rim every time. Okay, if you're Georgia, you're going to have to go for a timeout if you don't get yourself a score here. Uh, they got to go for a timeout right now. They're waiting too long. Down to two. The Wildcats of Kentucky defending Southeastern Conference. Oh, what a block. Oh, he rejects it. He made that block without leaving his feet. He had no hesitation at all by Terry Ferry. He tried to go with that little inside hook like George Mike and trying to wheel in with the elbow. There's the timeout, huh? Sam Bowie, been playing great during this stretch. There's a lot. There's that rim grab you're talking about, Al. Yeah. Now here is down the other end. Now watch, no fake at all on this one. Bowie just ramped it back. And Bowie has now scored 15, and Kentucky is right back in it, down by two. And at one point in the first half, up by seven at halftime. Up by ten again early in the second half. Now up by just two as their leading scorer, Dominique Wilkins, oh. gives him a four-point lead. Big hit, Dominique. I like that name. It's like um, the guy Carr out at Wichita. Antoine Carr. Dominique Wilkins. How about them dogs? They're really starting to rev it up here at the Georgia Coliseum. Hennefield harassed. There's the lob again. There's no way, the way what Kentucky's doing now is they're moving their forwards out, isolating Bowie with, Ter with Terry Fair. The lob is definitely there, and there's no way for the Georgia kids to drop back. They may have to start playing some zone. Well, I don't think they should even cover the men out front. Until they start hitting one, at yeah. least. Terry Fair down low, offensive oh. foul against Fair. Bowie took the charge, and the ball is back over to Kentucky. They can tie it. Seven foot one guy taking a charge. He wears a 60 and a half foot shoe. Look at those dry docks down there. <laughs> Good call by the official. Terry Fair trying to pick up that third one on Bowie, but Bowie doing an absolutely great job. Coach Joe B. Hall's father has been sick in the hospital. C.C. Bill Hall. He's coming along fine. He used to be the sheriff of Harrison County. So he's going to put his boots back on and shine up his badge. There's a lot of high noons left. I'm glad the opening taps are going your way, Bill. Garrett Hall from Cynthiana, Kentucky. Father Joe B. and all the best to him. With 10.53 left to play in the ball game here at Georgia. Georgia leading 52-50. There was Georgia going into the 1-3-1 half-court zone. They have to go zone because Kentucky eating them alive with Bowie on those lobs. There's a quick jumper. Marbury coming down quickly goes back out to the freshman Vern Fleming who sets it up for Georgia another freshman Jay Banks looking low Marbury trying to post up Minifield down low I think it's too crowded in there at the present time yeah because Bowie's not going to go out on fair so it's going to be hard to post the guy up low Bowie's going to be down there to block the shot you got Brett Barrett on Dominique Wilkins right now the freshman from Kentucky Barrett Stay in this game the last 10 minutes. Eric Marbury has to start scoring some points. Tough shot. Not a good shot. Collins coming down the defensive board for Kentucky. Wildcats can tie it with 10 minutes left to play in the game. The Kentucky coaches raise up their arms. Slow. Set up. Let's get tie here. Let's get out of this doghouse. Georgia back in the zone. 2 3 zone now. For the visiting team, Scarlet Coliseum, in the doghouse. How about them dogs? Up by two over favored Kentucky. Barrett down low to Bowie. Finally gets a foul call. Joe B. Hall to looking for one of those. Sam Bowie had bad timing on that pass. And a good pass by Chuck Viterba, but Sam committed himself too soon. They're actually playing their zone offense.
defense now right over the top of the Georgia defense. I mean, the normal passing lane would be cut off, but because of Bowie's great ability on the lob, the offense is going right over the top of the defense. And physically, Billy, Georgia's starting to feel it. Yep. They're getting wore down. Kentucky throws so many men at you with so much strength. They work these weight programs in September, October. They also, on Sundays, a lot of times, the Kentucky kids work uh, the weights just to tone up. I think another thing is Georgia defensively in the backcourt can't put pressure on Kentucky to make Bowie play the full 90 feet. Oh, like volleyball. Everybody over the rim. It comes back inbound to Georgia. You know, Wilkins is jumping right up there with those guys. He is. Cowan had to take the chance to go ahead and touch that ball, but he couldn't control it. See if Georgia tries the jump shot again. He took a walk. As back over to Kentucky, Sam Bowie of Kentucky has been right down in his office, down low, getting the points. He now has 18. Now you talk about the record that Kentucky's had in basketball. Georgia hasn't exactly had many times they've even been in a position to beat them. Well, Kentucky's trying to make up for the football. Football team knocked off Kentucky 27 to nothing. Obviously the number one in the country. And Mr. Walker will be back for three more years. Here's the 2-3 zone now by Georgia. See if Kentucky tries to go over him again. Charles Hurt, who played well early in the game. Pass goes out now to another sophomore, Derek Ford. Nice patience by Kentucky. Get low, oh. Sam. Get low down there. Play it again, Sam. <laughs> Derek Hord finds an opening, puts it up, and hits it to roll. Kentucky takes the lead. 53 nice. 52. Right back the other oh, way. Oh, this is Very beautiful. Fair. Beautiful. The world's fair. That was a sensational catch. He had to know where he was on the court. Just to catch the ball would have been a fine play, and then to put this in the basket is a sensational play. If the ball played around up there, really missed that dunk, then he came back down again. Well, uh, that showed you what a sensational athlete Terry Fair is. Uh, just to make that catch was tough enough. Another three-point play. Making Georgia gives Georgia back the lead after they lost it momentarily. They had only were behind by a point for about three seconds, so Fair put them in the lead again. 55-53, what a game this has turned out to be. Kentucky and Georgia, 8.35 to play. He's sitting back in a 2-3 zone. I agree with you, Al. I think they ought to lay off the Kentucky forwards completely and force them to make a jump shot from outside. There you go again. They're making everything right in around the rim. Fred Cowan gets the oh, shot. <laughs> Harbury takes yep. it to the basket. I'm going to tell you something, Billy. That play that Dominic Wilkins <laughs> just made was probably the best play of the ball game. That nice. ball was OB. Sensational catch. You know, you look around the country, we're not in a recruiting game, obviously, but you look at this ball club, you put a big man on this Georgia team, yeah. that they would be hard to handle. Yeah, they'd break through the sound barriers. They'd move up in the charts. Vern Fleming puts it inbound to freshman Jay Banks. There's Wilkins. He's hit for 23 so far in the game. The senior Fred Collins is on him now and playing him tight. Good defensive player, Collins. Outside to Marbury and to Vern Fleming. And Georgia sets it up all over again with this game tied at 55. Well, Dirk Minifield has done a great job on Marbury defensively. He's been, I think he's been averaging 21 points a game in the last three games. He has the ball now. You know, there's only one senior on the court right now. Both of these teams, very, very young. Fred Cowan, the only senior. Most of them are freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, Kentucky, highly ranked as they are, started four sophomores and a freshman in the game. This is not George's way of playing basketball. Vern Fleming takes it down. <laughs> he caught him with the hip, I believe. Now, let's see. Who are they calling that on? raised his hand, I, I, but, I, but he thought the foul's calling him initially, but it's on Vern Fleming for the charge. Oh, I thought he right called right him right. with the hip. Watch this. He called, no, he called Fleming for the charge after the shot. Yeah, Sam blocked me right out of the uh, other fellow's view. So a break in the action. 7.20 left to play now, and Kentucky has rallied back, took the lead for a moment. Now they're in a tie, 55 all.
During RCA's Instant Savings Spectacular, the instant you buy a selected RCA XL100 color TV, you'll save up to $75. Choose an 18-inch table model and save $25. Or Kentucky, the defending Southeastern Conference champion. Oh, they're moving yeah, pressure they're, up court. I'm well, surprised. What? Yeah, Hugh Durham kind of uh, annoyed with his players because he's been changing defenses at every timeout situation. They're going full court man-to-man, -man, but you can expect they won't stay in this. Good job by Bowie coming up to meet the pass. It takes the pressure off. Kentucky ought to go to Bowie right away before it gives Georgia an opportunity to get back in that zone. Roderber back in the game for Kentucky. Charles Hurt. Dominic Wilkins playing off him. They don't want the ball to go down low to Bowie. Charles Hurt has to take the 15 footer. Uh, Boy, well, sure giving it to him. Yeah, they have to let, he has to take it. You gotta be legit. Even if you miss, you gotta put the shot up. See, Banks is playing for Derber honest. He needs to drop back in there. Force those Kentucky forwards to put a shot up. Six forty-one to go. Game tied, 55 all. Derek Hoy with the ball for Kentucky. Bamboo has been the game plan down low on offense for the Wildcats. Big second half has brought Kentucky back. Well, they're looking for Bowie. He's got a muscle his way to get across the lane. Good patience by Kentucky. I like to see the game sometime this year, I hope, when Bowie takes on Ralph Sampson. I think that Sampson might be a little quicker. Bowie probably has the better outside shot. Um, I'd have to give my nod to Sampson. It may happen in the NCAA playoffs. Big Atlantic Coast Conference Got to take it, Charlie. That's it. You had to put it up. Oh, great rebound. Or oh, cleared out his own guy. Gerber, uh -oh. Gerber is hurt. The Gerber is hurt. Boy, that was that an was incredible Ford. rebound by Derek Ford. He is some athlete. See, he's hesitating here, yep. Billy. Instead the forward of just going will not up. put the ball up. Watch this rebound. Sensational rebound. There's Bert Derber. Got hit on the knee. Came down. Lost control of the ball. Call the walking violation. Let's see who's coming in. Ford's going out. They, they made a good move by putting Masters in because they've got to shoot from the outside. North Carolina beat North Carolina State today, 57-54. Georgetown leading UNLV. Nevada, Las Vegas, 54-52 in the second half. Clark likes to have them come into his little gym. <laughs> you don't get out of there alive often. Kentucky packing back in there, a little zone of their own now. Jump pass from Fleming, goes over to Eric Marbury. Here's the freshman Jay Banks quickly back outside of the freshman point guard Fleming. Eric has to put it up here, they're floating back in. They got Wilkins playing way down low, playing baseline, going to either side. Georgia not really a great perimeter shooting team either. Fleming more a penetrator, driver type. There you go. Jim Master back in the game. Maybe they're going to have him pop that jump shot if Georgia keeps collapsing on Bowie. When they get down the other end. 55 all with 4.55 to play. All right, the clock is becoming a factor now. That's why I think eventually Kentucky's going to have to come out of the zone if Georgia doesn't shoot. Right if, I, if I was Georgia, I'd just keep going like this right down to six seconds. So the worst can happen is OT. Plus, they had to know before this game started that they would have been happy to be in this position from the starting whistle. Yeah, they, they, they've got to go man-to-man. -man. They can't go into four minutes this way, I don't believe. 4.28 left. Bulldogs winding the clock down. 55-55 the score. How many times do you see a team get in this situation unless they're really good at being passive? Some guys put up a wild shot for no reason at all. Okay, Coach Joe B, you're going to have to take him out at four and put him man to man, create play. Joe Hall just doesn't want the easy layup here. Well, he has to do it. I can't let the clock be eaten up. The clock is becoming the key opponent here. Down to 355. Held on for a minute and a half. I think he goes to two minutes. Uh, he'd be wrong if he does, Billy. Georgia taking some gambles, packing it back in. If they're going to use the clock, they might as well use the whole half court. Back it back up again. Up. Up. 
They got a little anxious. You should have taken it yourself, Eric, that time. You're going to take it, but if, you're, if Kentucky stays in the zone, gang, you've got to stay outside. You can't take a shot. It doesn't make sense. We're down to 3.35 to play, and the game is tied at 55. Back at the Georgia Coliseum after this. Introducing the 1981 Chevy Malibu Sports Sedan. A solid, sensible car with a six... In the game for Kentucky, Sam Bowie, freshman Jim Master, Charles Hurt, Fred Cowan, the only senior out there, and sophomore guard Dirk Minifield. Vern Fleming, a freshman, ready to inbound the ball for Georgia. Jay Banks, a freshman's in there. So is Terry Fair. He has the ball. Yes, yeah, they are man to man. They had to. He can right out of it, Billy. Yeah, Joe's, he... Joe's too good of a coach to sit back for. Three minutes to go. 328 to go. Georgia's got them in the man to man. Whoop! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Hey. Dominique Wilkins. 25. Nice call, Coach Durham. It's a critical basket for Kentucky right here because then Georgia can sit on that ball a while. And they're back in the man to man. Dirk Minifield come down oh. and hits it for Kentucky. Big, Big Dirk. A lot of guts there. Two shot. Minifield has seven and Kentucky ties it again at 57 with 243 to go. I don't think he'll catch Fred Collins on an alley-oop again. He wants the ball down low, though. Collins really hanging on to him. you got to watch out for five count. Collins really pushing Wilkins inside. I don't think that referee was sure what he was going to call. He took that long hesitation. He wasn't sure to go for the walk and a foul. Put Dominique on that line. They're not in the one and one yet. Masters has to jump out of bounds. He's not giving him enough pressure. Jerry Fair pulls up, doesn't take the shot, and goes to Eric Marbury. Our producer today for NBC is Kenny Edmondson, our director Harry Coyle. And we're coming down the stretch with 2.15 to play in this game tied at 57. Short. That's good, uh, aggressive play by Fred Cowan. With Georgia not in the one and one, he's got to make sure that Wilkins doesn't get a shot off. He's better to foul him while he's trying to get the ball as opposed to getting in one of those three-point play situations. What I would do is move Fair out near half court, give him the ball. Sam won't come out. See how far Sam's off him now? Why don't you just keep holding the ball, Fair? Terry. Fleming's got to watch the five-second count. All right, now stay there, Terry. Now Terry's trying to get rid of him too soon. He's going right back into Sam. There's another one on Fred Cowan, trying to prevent Wilkins from getting position. Wilkins is playing himself up. Now one and Blue one. chip game. More on Cowan. Yep, now one and one. It's going to be a free-throw shooting contest now the rest of the way. With Fred Cowan having four, we'll see if they move over Charles Hurt to try to guard Wilkins the rest of the way. Fred Cowan going to the free throw. He gets the personal foul, his fourth, and Dominique Wilkins at the free throw line. Wilkins now four of seven from the free throw line. 25 points for the day. 1.30 Sam, to go. Sam was on the right side of the basket, reached over and got the ball on the left side of the basket. And we're still tied this time at 57 with 1.28 to play. We'll be back at the Georgia Coliseum in a moment. They're in the one and one. We'll see that Wilkins dunk on the lob pass the fair. Great play. And almost again, uh, grabbing that rim a little bit. Yeah, good play. George is playing man-to-man. -man. Coaches are really perking today. They're humming. You know, Kentucky hasn't used that screen for Bowie at the foul line where he rolls and goes for the dunk. This would be a great time for it. Well, you're playing chess right now. You have to determine what George is going to do. They're going to play you aggressively. If not, then you play for the last shot. I'd play real aggressive because it doesn't make any difference if he fouls. Yep, try to go for a steal off the dribble right. or go for a stealing on overplay in every pass. Yep. Yep. You don't want him to go to the lane and have a chance for a two-shot yep. foul. Yep. Burn, get up on him tight. 
Yep, he's playing too loose. Now they're going to let Kentucky go for the last shot. Then we got an OT, or Kentucky wins 59-57. I think they should be going for steals here, Al. That's they what I said. They got two steal fouls. Steal the dribble. Get. Try to steal off the dribble. Yeah. The guy won't go to the foul. Right now, go steal the ball. When will Kentucky call a timeout, Billy? What do you say? 18. Uh, you say 18 seconds? Yeah. I'll take it a little bit higher. But I, I think they should be trying to steal the ball on the dribble right now. There's no sense allowing Kentucky to control their destiny. Once you get under 30 seconds, he should go into his zone now. He should fall into his zone. There he goes. Good 22. coaching on both ends. These guys are dynamite. Just by four seconds, 22 seconds. I said a little bit higher. Oh, well, you didn't put a number. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't bet me. He thinks he's in that game. You know where the people say, how much does this cost and that cost? <laughs> I'll tell you, this one's going to come right down to a final shot and maybe to overtime as Kentucky and Georgia are tied 57-all. Immediately following this game, there's more exciting college basketball on NBC and top regional action, Virginia Tech. Jim Master has eight. I believe he's four for four for the field, L. I believe that Kentucky will still call another timeout with about 12 seconds to go. I do also believe that Mr. Hall, C.C. Bill Hall, should turn off the television set. He's recovering right now. You know, another thing I think that I think it's good to always put your team out on the court last at one of these timeouts so you don't give them the look that you're going to use defensively. Absolutely right. Here you have Georgia standing out there in what looks like it's going to be a man to man defense. Joe Hall, by coming out late, can see what they're in. And he can take advantage of that. He, he does have two timeouts left. Georgia has five timeouts left. So I, I think he'll call another one with 12. We'll see. We've got an MVP to select. Wilkins and Bowie, the leading candidates. 18 seconds to go. Game is tied. 57 all. Kentucky with the ball. Arbery has got to go for a steal here. Go for the steal. There you are. There you are. There you are. A little seconds. bit late. A little bit too late. Should have called out in about 11 seconds. Now he's taking around five or six seconds. If the shot's missed, you've got an opportunity to tap it in. He now should put Turpin in, put the Twin Cities in, or the World Trade Center, which would be Turpin and Bowie. Or even go to the Tri-Cities, put three big men in there with, um, what's the, uh, Barrow. Barrow. Barrow in there. Because most games are won by the rebound, put, put, be putting back in. As long as you don't allow Georgia time to go down and score. So they look for the shot with six. Now there's not that much time to so look for the shot at five. If it goes in, fine, the game's over. If not, they go to OT. But the rebound is the key. Okay, you're Georgia. They showed man-to-man -man the last time out of bounds. Now you gotta figure, are they gonna go back in the zone and force Kentucky to take that shot from the perimeter? What I would do if I was Georgia, I would go to a box one. I would put man-to-man -man on Masters. And if I even went to a triangle two with a man-to-man -man on Masters, a man-to-man -man on minifield, and a triangle zone around Bowie. Probably the best choice of all for the simple reason that none of the Kentucky forwards have shown they put the ball up on the outside yet today. The triangle two, Freddie Cowan made a big shot to beat Tennessee from the corner. Let's see, it looks like they're going straight man-to-man. -man. Right. They'll release the ball high to Bowie if they hurt you. Release it high. All right. Charles Hurd down to six seconds. He has to put it up. Dirk has to jump it up. It's up. Down. It's OT. Not yet. We got a second to go. Oh, it's a second. They got one second. They're less than a second to go. If there's a second on the clock, there's less than a second or flat second. Now, let's see if they're going to put any more time back on the clock. You, Durham, not asking for it. I think it's a good move to always ask for it. Well, second back in the clock. Well, you know, say, hey, we, we, we didn't get enough time there. Well, they have a problem, Bill, because the clock is crossing from us. The back of us is broke. It's the only clock they got working that's facing us above the crowd up there. That's got a second to go on it. One second to play. All right, about the only thing you can hope for. And, of course, Kentucky. See, Turpin will be coming in the game now to play defense. He's going to win before. That's right. He's going to be in there to play against the long pass. You're going to try to throw at the length of the court to go for the one, or you're going to try to get it to half court and take the jump. I would throw at the length of the court. I would go back to Munich in 1972, what the Russians did to us. I would throw at the length of the court. What Kentucky has to be careful about there in the one and one. 
Zebra George had two fouls to give. Negative Kentucky has none out. to give. Okay, I would put, put a big man on the guy right. throwing the ball in now. Put a big, absolutely right, Billy. You put a big man on the guy taking the ball in. He jumps up, which, which creates you to throw the ball higher, which allows your defense to adjust more. But um, when I say the second left, there's five ticks inside each second. There could be one-fifth of a second, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths for a whole second. But there's not over a second left. We fractionalize this thing. The second all of a sudden becomes a very big one. The game could be decided if George is able to put the ball in somehow or else draw the foul. They're going to throw no, the it's ball. Over. Nope. Well, if that goes in, we all go. <laughs> <laughs> if that goes in, we go bananas. <laughs> Overtime at Georgia. Kentucky and Georgia locked up at the end of regulation, 57 all. Now the guy's got a time to regroup. Oh, he stole, stole the, tap. the tap. Stole the tap. And one referee saying, let's jump it over again. And if that would be the case, Georgia would get a big break. Watch Joe. Now watch Joe. There they are together. Big break. The red and the blue. Joe, <laughs> Joe big Durham break. wants another jump. Joe wants the ball. Yeah, I, be I believe I believe Joe's right in this. Coach. Yeah, I think so too. Dominique stole the stole the tap, no question about it. Should have been Kentucky's ball. Watch Wilkins jump, 21. Against a seven foot one inch player, but Kentucky gets the ball and Dirk Minifield leads off in the overtime with possession for Kentucky. And the man in the cat and mouse game right now. That's, that's that. what he should have been doing. Yep, that's the play that wouldn't have hurt him before. Okay, Banks going for the ball, call for the personal foul. Georgia's so still under the limit. That's right, Kentucky will just get the ball out in the sidelines. That's why before we were talking about going for the steal, particularly on the dribble, because you got a chance to go ahead and pick one off. Jim Master, the freshman, hands off to Dirk Minifield. Bowie out high now. Minifield fires and doesn't get the roll, but look at those. Oh, that's just Georgia ball. Georgia ball. Two Kentucky players battled for it. Good call by the official. Charles Hurt and Fred Cowan both fighting for the ball. Called for a travel and Georgia gets the ball with 4.30 to play in overtime. And in it goes to Dominic Wilkins. Cowan with four fouls. Remember that. Jay Banks, the freshman. Here's Wilkins. He wants to put it up. And he does. Look at that. His fingers do the talking again as Dominic Wilkins has now scored 28. Yeah, back in the zone now. They're playing the zone with the lead, man to man when it's tied. Masters take the top of the key. Let Dyke take the wing. Interchange. But Masters takes the top, the top of the key. Well, Charles Hurt not even looking for the shot. <laughs> Georgia in the lead in overtime, 59-57. Outside they go, and Master right. pulls up. But I just said earlier, it's so important that you've got to put Masters on the top of the key. He run the show because he's the better shot. He can't lay off him. And shoot from the top of the key is close to the lane. Tell me that's not a lot of pressure for the guy that's supposed to take your key shot being a freshman starting his first game. He hit a four jumpers. Bowie with the rebound, and here comes Kentucky looking to tie the game in overtime. Georgia got the shot they wanted inside for Terry Fair. That's good, man. Show him on top of the key there. Okay, now he's in the right position. Now, uh, get back over the other way, son. Get back to him, Charlie. Now, uh, move in, Masters. Now, take the shot. Take it. I'm surprised that Georgia players aren't more aware of him out there. Just take it this time, coming back. Take it, son. They're really not playing him aggressively, Al. He's yeah. got the shot. Here you go. There you there go. How much should I get paid at Marquette the coach? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't enough. <laughs> well, that's the Catholic school. <laughs> Five for six for Jim Master, the freshman for Kentucky. All right, now back into Dominic. He's your... No, 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 no. really going to take it. I think that's only his third shot of the game. Eric Marbury hit two. Now get back on the top of the key again, will you? Georgia players aren't respecting Master enough. 
Red Howen takes his time. Charles Hurt goes back up. That doesn't go for Kentucky, but Hurt will go to the free throw line. A lot of pressure on these Kentucky kids. Yep. Boy, he wanted that one. Good rebound by Hurt. Such a stride in the Kentucky basketball operation. Accepting this Southeastern Conference game between Kentucky. I would have called a timeout here, Isis. Yeah, particularly yeah. when you had six timeouts yeah, six left. Six timeouts left. Better call for and he's a 57% free throw yeah. shooter. Oh, there he is. There. Off the front rim. All right, he'll accept that. And so will Kentucky as they've got it locked up now at 61. Overtime, 155 to play. Overtime seem to go so fast. They really do. All the way down inside of two minutes now. This might not be the last overtime of this game. That's going to be fifth foul on Cowan. He tried to use his hands to stop Wilkins in there. And that's going to hurt because he's a veteran player and knows how to play a man defensively. They're going to probably come back with Gerber on Wilkins, who's also a good aggressive defensive player. Well, Dominic Wilkins leads the SEC in scoring. 23 a game, a shade over 23. Wilkins, a sophomore from Washington, North Carolina. Dominic Wilkins, 6'7", 205 pounds. His high game of the year is 37 against Florida. And remember, he missed the front end of the one-on-one -on -one that would have won this game for Georgia earlier. He reminds me of uh, Haywood, Spencer Haywood, when he used to play at University of Detroit. Big foul shot here. It's the pair. Both for all net. Now, here we go again. Alan Billy, how about a most valuable player? We're going to have to get to one of those shortly. I think Dominique Wilkins gets my vote. Yeah, even if Kentucky wins, I got to go along with you. Once again, they're not respecting Master's ability to hit the jump shot. He's wide open. Yeah, we got to get in that top position. Jim Master, the freshman, looks at Bowie, but there's no opening in the middle, and so they keep it on a perimeter now to Verderber. And back to Master. Very great quickness. Ooh, and the they... Georgia defense. Rebound down to Georgia, and the Bulldogs lead by two. An overtime right. out. Time out right here to get organized. Got to pick them up real early. You got to get out there, Chuck Verderber. Well, now what they got to do is get the ball to Terry Fair, because... Bowie hasn't come out to play him. Wow! Why? 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 out Kentucky! Ah, had a call. Why? Why would he take that shot? Well, because you were right, Billy. A timeout should have been called. You got plenty left with less than a minute to go. Right. No need whatsoever. You got, you got Terry Fair. You see Marbury going in. Now, he got away with this before because Bowie wasn't sure he's going to take the shot, but Ooh. no way to take that shot. Bowie, you're good. And we'll be back in the overtime after this. In this game, well, time out, Georgia, will you? Durham's not signaling for one. He's up off the bench. Here's why they shouldn't have taken the shot. Bowie's not playing Terry Fair. Georgia would have been able to freeze the ball for a long, long time. There you go. Here we go. Well, I, you know who's going to get the ball, don't you? <laughs> I wonder who. <laughs> 11 seconds to go. We'll be back. His brother didn't have a bad year either. It took Virginia Tech to a bowl game. Okay. Eight seconds to go. Float it high. They're going to float it high to Dominic Wilkins, I believe. Three seconds. It. They better get it off. That's close. We're going to try it again. We'll do it again, OT. Bad plan by Georgia. Now, they broke down community-wise. They just yep. didn't have the communication with each other. They go into a second overtime of Georgia. Sam Bowie controls the tip again to Dirk Minifield. Kentucky driving down low, but Minifield can't take it baseline. Don't forget, Kentucky picks up another timeout, so now they have two timeouts. You know, I don't believe Georgia's had a substitute in the second half. Am I uh, off on that one? I know four of the guys have not been out of there. Sam should score now. They're playing man-to-man. -man. I think they have gone pretty much with the same five. All right, the kid's got to be getting a little tired, a little sluggish. Oh. Lead pass. Oh. oh, what a oh. great hustle play. Charles Hurt, what a hustle play. Was that Hurt? Yeah, Terry Fair. 
Or was it? Yeah, I think it was hurt. Charles yeah. hurt. Yep. Sensational hustle. What happened? Terry Fair didn't realize that he had a man out in front and burned Fleming. We'll see it right here. That pass was for Fleming. Terry Fair got his hand in the way, but look at that hustle by Charles. Hurt. Great play. Watch Renali Oop coming up here for Sam. Wilkins not even playing hurt. He's standing back in there, double teaming. All right, Masson's got to shoot then. Four minutes in the second overtime. Louie bumped hard, no foul call. Joe B. Hall wants one, not gonna get it. Here's the lob chance. We're gonna have a big game tomorrow to Paul against Syracuse up at the horizon in Chicago. Can't be much better than this one. You gotta remember, Syracuse just beat Old Dominion, and that's the only team that's beaten the ball so far this year. Right. Boy, they're they're almost triple teaming Bowie in there now. All right, no, no problem. As long as they don't turn the ball over. Joe's giving instructions standing up. He doesn't want to waste one of those two timeouts. It's been a long time since Bowie scored, about 13 minutes of playing time into the overtimes. We're in the second overtime now. Sam Bowie standing at 18 points. There she goes. Short. Oh, right short. on the button. What do you mean, short? I thought that was short. He's so you smooth. were shooting for Wake Forest. He's so smooth with that jumper. Great looking jump shot. His first start as a freshman, Jim Master, has been a catalyst for Kentucky. Master now with 14 points on seven of eight shooting. He had a foul against Fleming. He really has a hard time handling Fleming one on one. That was close. I thought Fleming cleaned them out with the inside arm there. Yeah. Kentucky in the lead, 65 63. And another consensus All American, prep All American from a season ago, like Jim Master was. Vern Fleming goes to the free throw line now for the Bulldogs of Georgia. Surprising yeah. about Vern, he has a twin brother that plays for Xavier, and they also went to two, diff two different high schools in New York City. Only a 65% free throw shooter. Caught the back rim. You hit the back rim on a foul shot, you get no breaks. You get breaks off the front rim. Well, that makes it no triple overtime because you're on an odd point. If you're even, you go to overtime. Once Georgia, an odd number comes up, that's all she wrote. Georgia picking up full court now. 2.50 to go in the second overtime. Kentucky 65, Georgia 64. The Wildcats of Kentucky, five times national champions of the game. In possession of the ball, and Jim Master, a confident freshman with 14 points, has led them in the backcourt here in the second half. Little delay game by Kentucky now. Indiana's Mr. Basketball a season ago. Harding High School in Fort Wayne. Dirk Menefield had a little problem earlier, threw up a brick, but he's played a great floor game for Kentucky, both ends defensively and with the ball. Nice job by Bowie stepping out. Jim he Masters had it down to two schools, Kentucky and Notre Dame. Almost the wall! Uh -oh. Dirk Menefield really made a cardinal mistake there by taking that ball down on the baseline with the dribble. No place to go down there. Plenty of time left, a one-point threat. Georgetown has just upset Nevada Las Vegas in Nevada, 69-68. Kentucky went to the zone right here. Georgia trying to set up their offense from the sideline. They really could use the timeout. Well, some coaches just don't believe in calling them. I think Hugh Durham might be that type of a coach. But the clock's eating away. You're down yep. by one. Take a chance to be aggressive offensively here when you're down. Yep. I still like uh, Eric Ma Barry to make the move. This is interesting. How far down the line? No man's land again. You guys have been pretty good calling these timeouts. We got any coming here? Yeah, he's got to call a timeout. He has a ton coming. Yeah, he's got to call one, too, because he's in a delay. It looks like he's wanting to go to beat him with that last shot because he knows this guy's got to be wearing down. Uh, I don't like that philosophy, though. Uh, it's tough, particularly when you're at home. Yeah. Double overtime game, and there's 50 seconds left to go in the second overtime. Kentucky by a point after Alex. trailing by as many as 13 in the first half. He's going to call one with 25 seconds to go here and go for the, set up the last shot, it looks like. Yeah, then... Um, oh, what a dangerous ball! Oh, what a Jake got the ball! Oh! Did you see that dunk? Sensation. 
sensational. Fleming went at him, unbelievable, and he out of control dunk. Midfield at 6-3. When a foot hey, hey, the hook the rim again. Time out, time out. Are you you call a timeout, Georgia. Oh, they just cost themselves six seconds there. 18 seconds to play, and Kentucky's lead is again a point. All right, now you gotta. Uh, this man yeah, I think it's gonna of all guys to put on the line it's gonna be uh master on the line leading three throw shooter in the conference and one of the best in the country look at this you gotta ice him that was some play by Dirk Minifield on the drive Georgia was trying to organize their offense from the sideline everybody was paying attention to what coach Durham was saying and they got themselves in a position where Terry Fair just threw that ball back into the backcourt. Okay, let's get regrouped here now. We got Kentucky's ahead by a point. You'll see Masters go up there. He does that shadow shooting. That's the same thing that Kyle Macy did. He'll also, let's see him shadow shooting there. Now he'll also dry his hands on his socks like Kyle did. See if we can stay on Macy, on, uh, excuse me, on Jim Masters. All right, don't step in that line till you get the ball, son. They're trying to get a matchup right now to see who's guarding who. They've asked for a situation where they can yeah. get a lineup. Watch him shadow shoot once more. Let's see a shadow shoot once more. No, he didn't go it. All right. He shoots a little from the right. Almost. Another timeout by George. Good. Good call. Good call. Now he doesn't now, want to count no, the timeout. What he's doing right now, he wants to. He's called the timeout. Georgia has the right. We'll come back and tell you about it in a second. Oh, don't leave us. Oh, Jim Master, the freshman from Fort Wayne, was going to the free throw line. It looked like there was a timeout, Billy, but then they went back out. Well, what happens here is Hugh Durham called the timeout to ice the shooter the first time. They went and took the normal 60 seconds. He allowed him to go back out again, and then he took another timeout, and on this occasion, it's the, it's the coach that calls the timeout that has the right to say whether he wants to use the full 60 seconds. He said, no, this time, call a timeout, shake him up, say, I don't want the 60 seconds. I want to play right now. Now he called the third timeout, and the thing I don't understand, once the official puts the ball at the hand of the shooter, you can't allow that timeout to be called. So let's see what he's going to try to do right now. That's another shadow shot, that a boy. All right. Puts All it up from the right of his ear. The sixth man from Georgia. The Georgia Dogs are acting up. 89% oh. free throw shooter. He pulled that one a little bit, Bill. He was fortunate. <laughs> he just stayed down in his, in his dip too long that time. He won't stay down this long this time. Well, if he's going to be another Kyle Macy, this is one of the places that the great tradition of Macy and the foul shooter. Ooh, Jim I, Master of Kentucky. A lot of legends in basketball at that school. And another one beginning today with Jim Master in his first start as he gives Kentucky a 69-66 lead. Well, now Kentucky obviously will come out in the zone. Wall that Coach Joe B. Hall will be telling them, no three-point play. Just keep your arms up in the air. So Jim Master hitting the free throws has now scored 16. The Georgia Coliseum, the doghouse they call it, it was Georgia's day, it looked like, at the outset, building up a 13-point first-half lead, a 7-point halftime advantage. Extended it to 10 in the second half. Then Kentucky started to come back. Great play in the backcourt from a freshman. Jim Master helped Kentucky. And now the Wildcats, defending champions of the Southeastern Conference, up by three with 15 seconds to go. Well, obviously, uh, Kentucky will come out into a zone. They'll try to keep the pass up court. They'll put a guard up court to keep the pass up court to start the clock. And again, they don't want the mortal sin, the three-point play. See, to keep Kyle Macy up. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Jim Masters. And Georgia has to get it up quickly and then call a timeout immediately. Here's Terry Fair turning around. Oh! Oh, oh, oh what a play. Uh, he, he touched the ball while the ball was on the rim. It really should have been no basket, but it was an incredible, incredible tap-in. I don't know if he did touch it on the rim, Billy. It looks like he caught it after it came off. He caught it from the bottom. He may have. It was right. Look to me. It was in contact with the rim. You might be, it might have been a little low. Here it comes. Right here. Thanks for the replay. Great shot by Fair. Now watch it. See, it's off the rim. Whoa. See that? <laughs> show, uh, Mr. Harry Coyle, will you show that again, please, for the audience? Harry Coyle, the super director. Why don't you ask him to show it at a different angle? You'll make it tough for him. Don't no. give it too easy. Now, you watch, Billy. The ball's playing up there. 
Well, that was a great shot by now, Terry Now, Perry. watch the underhand. He, he fingertips it, see? He's not near the rim. Uh, tough, tough call. It, it was legit. A sensational tap in by our MVP of the game, though, right, Dan? It surely was, and our MVP has now gone for 32 points. Dominique Wilkins, but it might be too little too late. That tap in and just three seconds remain in the Kentucky Wildcats with a one-point lead will inbound the ball. You watch this time that Sam Bowie will come up to release the pressure. If they can't get the ball in bounds, they'll throw it high to Sam Bowie taking the pressure off the guard. I think that what Georgia ought to do right here is no matter who the pass goes to, first of all, don't let Master touch it. Secondly, the minute that the man is ready to receive the ball, hit him hard enough to go ahead and create the foul. They cannot afford to allow Kentucky to use up two Three seconds. seconds. I you. believe they should go get Herschel Walker and bring him in. <laughs> well, he had enough magic during football. Herschel's over in Dallas, going to run the track meet tonight. I saw he ran a, what, a 6.29 or something like that. Was fifth place against the best runners in the entire world. All right. They're not taking the guy with the ball out of bounds. There's a wild card out there for Georgia. And that's Vern Fleming all the way back. What a foul of me. Good play. Good play. Got two oh. seconds. I can't believe there's no, two seconds. Be. No, can't no be. way. Uh, there's one the, second. The clock does not start until the ball touches a person's hand inbound. Bad play by, and that's a, Al, I guarantee you, he's not, Hugh Durham's not working that timer as well as you had him caught up at Marquette. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, wait a minute. They got two seconds the ball. Really Honestly, tight. it's my strongest suit. Boy, Hugh Durham is really hot. And he should be. Should be. Why don't you pay the time and then? <laughs> He's a volunteer all the time. That's if you expect perfection, pay somebody. <laughs> Most expensive thing in the world is cheap help. <laughs> Verderber going on the line. I think the Georgia team are disappointed about losing the game, but the effort they made and the way they played, they should be carried off this course. They did play a great, that great sealed game. It. That sealed it. But Kentucky, as they've done so many times, even when it seemed like they were going to have the bad day, rallies back. And the Wildcats of Kentucky win it in double overtime, 71 to 68. For Al McGuire and Billy Packer, this is John Cricky. That's it from the University of Georgia. The final score, Kentucky 71, Georgia 68. There's more regional college basketball coming up on NBC.